Hello and welcome to today's session. I hope you're all doing amazingly well from whichever part of the world you are watching. I now only have just a couple of more days left for my vacation. We're first going down south to Cadi and then we will be going up north to Cantabria and we're going to do one of the the arms of the Camino de Santiago, and it's called Camino Lebaniego. So really looking forward to some hiking, being in nature, and truly disconnecting. And hopefully the temperature will be far lower than what we have here in Madrid, except down south, when we're by the beach. That can definitely be 39, 40 degrees. Today, I wanted to talk about how can you monetize wellness services. And the reason I bring this subject up is that we all know that wellness is important. We all know that today's consumer is increasingly demanding wellness services. It's like you have a room or you have breakfast within your room rate you're also expecting a yoga session, the use of a gym. There are many things that we're already, many consumers already take it as like, it's a given. This is going to have to be part of my experience. Otherwise, I'm not even going to go to this hotel. So while it is a beautiful thing that wellness has become kind of an essential in every hotel, the problem is with wellness directors and wellness leaders, the problem we have is how can we actually monetize these wellness services? Because just the way hotel accounting is done, all the benefit of attracting that guest who is probably coming for that free yoga session, which is not free, technically speaking, it's included within the room rate. All that revenue goes to rooms, whereas the wellness department is sometimes just left with the cost of the yoga teacher, for example, and no benefit. So we are back to kind of square one where we started, where wellness only represents one to three, maybe five to 10%, depending on the location of total hotel revenue, when we're talking about direct revenues from wellness-related services, so your spa treatments, your yoga sessions, your personal training sessions, anything that is directly generated from wellness. And this becomes a problem because of what I call the wellness expectation. Today, Consumers expect to have healthy dining options. They expect to have a mindfulness session. They expect to have a workshop on cooking. They expect to have maybe a free yoga session or two a day. They expect to have a few aerobics classes, again, depending on your location, to be part of their room rate. So, what hoteliers end up finding is that they have to include that within the room rate. And what ends up happening is without even realizing it, wellness is again used as an amenity, an add-on, or a marketing tool to bring in guests and to increase hotel occupancy. So while knowing that wellness is on the map, there is no doubt, I don't think you're gonna to speak to any hotelier who will doubt the value of wellness. And in fact, they want wellness to be part of the entire guest experience. The challenge, however, comes for us wellness leaders. How can we monetize these wellness-related services? The way we do that is by tapping into the intangible value that wellness brings to the table. 
And stage two of my essence framework story, also known as the winning plan framework, is about how us wellness leaders can implement wellness in every key touch point throughout our guests' experience before they get to the hotel and long after they leave. Because what we have to remember is that wellness is part of the whole. Now, if we continue to look at our individual profit and loss, we will just feel despair at the missed opportunity. However, there is also an upshot. If we look at the entire hotel profit and loss and what benefit we have both in our top and bottom lines because of wellness, that intangible value, that value that is very, very difficult. The benefits are difficult to measure. But if we tap into that, that is when we see the true majesty of what wellness can actually do for a hotel. And us wellness leaders don't end up chasing a profit and loss, like the peanuts in a profit and loss. When you look at the big picture of what a hotel profit and loss looks like. So how do you do this? You do this by integrating wellness into every touch point of the guest experience. And you do that first by knowing your ideal guest, understand their wellness needs so you can tailor your offerings accordingly. Even if it's a free mindfulness session, even if it's a free yoga session, obviously that will be included within the room rate. Then second, you virtually walk their path. You virtually experience every step of your guest's stay to create a flawless and memorable experience. Imagine what it would feel like to be your guest, finding you on the internet, finding you on Instagram, finding you wherever they find you, connecting with you because of the wellness experience you are offering beforehand, ensuring that all their pre-arrival, their travel, their well-being needs are being understood. And then just imagine right from the lobby to the experience of going to the room, to the food and beverage, to spa, that entire experience is designed to enhance their overall well-being. And then what you do is you create the plan. You write a guide that helps your team and not only the wellness team, the entire hotel, how can they meet guest needs and deliver great wellness experiences. That is how you tap into the intangible value of wellness. And the benefits, the outcome, the result of tapping into the intangible value of wellness is firstly, you make wellness omnipresent. You're weaving it into every part of the guest experience. And second, you establish a clear, measurable impact on guest satisfaction. You are proving the undeniable value of wellness because hotels do measure guest satisfaction. Hotels do measure repeat ratio. And just imagine if wellness can be a key influencer in that. And third, you as a wellness leader become the cornerstone of the hotel service offering. So wellness becomes that cornerstone of the hotel's entire service offering. And with the entire team looking to the wellness leader as the glue that holds everything together. That is what happens when you tap into the intangible value of wellness. That is what happens when 
you implement the story, the second stage of my essence framework. And the problem of, or the cost of not looking into the intangible value and insisting on getting your charge back on your profit and loss instead of looking at the bigger picture is that as a wellness leader, trying to monetize services that honestly guests expect to be part of the room rate, you're essentially trying to fight a losing battle. And trust me, I have been there many times and that has not served me. It has never served my team and it's definitely not served the hotel. So encouraging all wellness leaders, when you want to monetize wellness, tap into the two core components of wellness. You have the tangible, you know, the direct relate, you know, the direct revenue generated from wellness related services. That's an easy measure, but tap into the intangible value where you cannot really measure indirectly how much revenue is coming through wellness, but you can measure guest satisfaction. You can measure guests returning back. That you can measure. And that is directly related to how they were made to feel when they were in the hotel. Now, just imagine if wellness was actually weaved throughout the entire guest experience. They know that they left with their well-being enhanced and they will definitely be telling everyone about that and they'll want to come back. The problem, as I was saying earlier, of not tapping into the intangible value and insisting only looking at that direct revenue is that as a wellness leader, you continue to feel undervalued. As I said earlier on, you are fighting a losing battle and I've tried to fight several of them. Secondly, you struggle with increasingly demanding budgets. If you're not trying to be part of the hotel service ecosystem and you want wellness to be treated separately as a separate business unit, then you will definitely be given a very demanding budget. And last, you risk burning out. You serve no one when you're insisting on just focusing on the tangible value of wellness. And I'm a living proof of that, but I've tried that many times and I have definitely burned myself out and it has served no one. So when we're talking about monetizing your wellness services, it's also important to see the wellness expectation. What expectation do our guests have? The increasingly conscious traveler, the increasingly well-being oriented client, what are their expectations? What do they expect to be part of their experience? And they don't expect to pay an add-on for that. And then once you're clear in that, try to see where can wellness fit in? If I can't get it in direct revenue, how can I do it indirectly? And that is what the second state story of my essence framework helps you do. You map out the entire journey of your guest. And you're actually looking at your wellness concept from their perspective. And you're making them essentially the hero of their own well-being journey, their own experience, that memorable, cherubim experience that everyone is looking for when they come to visit your hotel. And on that inspiring note, I wish you all a wonderful day ahead. Take care now.